What's up, guys? Tommy Mars here. I am back with a where the f did my Taylor Swift folklore video go? They got me, folks. They came for me and they got me. They got taken down. It's okay. It happens, right? That's the name of the game. So here's the thing. I've taken a little while to do another Taylor Swift video because, like I said, folklore is gone. And it pained me because it was such a fun video to do. Uh, the response was really good. Uh, it seems like a lot of people got a lot of things out of it because, as you know, or may or may not know, is that when I break down an album, I like to break down a lot of production notes. I uh, kind of get sidetracked almost in like the production aspect, where everything sits on the spectrum, guitars, drums, vocals. I like uh, getting into vocal effects and, you know, all these kind of things. So I don't know. I don't kind of just react to the song and, hmm, yeah, that was pretty good, <laughs> whatever. I mean, I do that too, but I think I like to break it down. And it seemed like a lot of you appreciated that. I got a ton of messages and comments about that very thing, asking me to do that more, you know, more of that, breaking down the next Taylor record uh, the same way I did Folklore. So the, the real is that, had that not happened and it got erased from history, uh, I probably would be way past Lover by now. I'd probably be into straight into 1989 by now, which I'm like really looking forward to of going to. Because the thing is, Folklore hit me much differently than I thought it was going to. I, I, I knew it was going to be good, but because I did that Cardigan video. In fact, I like the album so much that every year on soundvapors.com, I do a album of the year, article, list, ranking type deal. Easily, this one is, I can tell you right now what we get in, we're in September. There's no way this is getting knocked out there. So easily, this is on the, the short list of contenders for album of the year. So when I publish that, that usually happens, you know, right at the end of December. When that comes out, this is definitely one of the contenders. I don't know where it falls right now. I have not even got there, thought about it. I do have, you know, I probably have 20 records that I've jotted down over 2020 that as soon as I hear it, I go, that's a contender. That's going to be one of the last albums I listen to. Because that last week, all I do is listen to the whatever the list is. Sometimes it's 40 records, whatever it is. I listen to them all and I start to rank them what I think is album of the year. Spoiler alert, uh, this will definitely be on the short list. I don't know, going into it, if you ask me, hey, you think this will be album of the year? I'm like, it'll probably be on all these lists because that's what you know people do. They put these popular albums on list or whatever. I don't. Even if you look look at past ones, there's famous, really famous record people, records and stuff that are on there. But then there's you know albums that aren't so famous. I don't really give a damn about any of that. I just want it to be the best, the way it resonates with me because it's my list and my website. So I will publish it what I, how I want it to be up there but I can tell you this is easily one of the best records of the year that I've heard so far so here's what I decided to do today explain to you guys what's happening I am going to do the lover album I'm gonna do it I'm still gonna do it I just got to figure out how I'm gonna do it because I try to edit these things you know I want to be as respectful as I can to the artist uh, while still doing a you know, review, reactionary, critique type video type of deal ski. So I'm still trying to figure that out. Uh, if anybody has any suggestions into that, let me know. Because uh, I'm not really interested in putting up videos they haven't taken down because it, there is a lot of work, especially when you do a full album, man. That's like, that's a lot of, that's hours of work of doing that. But that is the business that we're in sometimes. So sometimes you just got to deal or don't do it at all. Either way, I'm going to listen to the full Lover record. I just been kind of, I put it on pause to kind of wait for you guys to figure out what I'm going to do, how I'm going to do it type of thing. So I haven't stopped listening to the album. In fact, I've been listening to it quite a bit. So what I decided to do was I, I have, of course, I have the footage, the raw footage of the video here. So I watched some of it because I kind of wanted to see my reaction to these songs when I first heard them, because now I've, I have a more than a few listens under my belt. And it was kind of funny because I could see myself picking out things that I liked picking out my favorite songs and all that kind of stuff. So what I thought I'd do today is I am going to rank my Elite 8. So there's 16 tracks on the regular version of the album, and I'm going based on the, the two videos that I shot, Folklore Part 1 and Part 2. So what I'm doing is ranking my 8 favorite. Let's get some caveats out of the way. One is, these are not the, the best 8 songs. These are not the great 8. So these are simply my preference to listen to them, and now that I have a, a lot of listens to it, I've kind of started doing that thing where 
I will, if I have time, I listen to the whole thing. If I'm pressed for time or from the car and I'm in a, you know, a 20 minute car ride or something, I know the ones that I'm going to. I mean, you guys do this too, right? You know, you have an album and you have a certain amount of time and then you just start going to certain songs. That's kind of what it's become for folklore for me. So I've ranked the eight that I go to the most. So I thought this would be fun. This is a way for me to kind of get back on the Taylor Swift train. And I hope that you'll hop aboard with me. Choo! I hope we can go. So let's go. Number eight. Number eight. So number eight, I put Exile as this one. Now, the thing is, this is such a great song. You know, all right, let me just start this right now. See, train wreck. As I go through these, a lot of times I'll say, oh, no, no, that should be higher. Or why did I put it there? And you're probably going to say the same thing. I'm going, I, I'm a, I'm a crystal ball. I am a, what's it, not a soothsayer. What is that called? A fortune teller. I predict there will be a, there will be more than a dozen comments of people saying, I can't believe you had that, that low, or I can't believe you had this song lying, or what about this song? What about that song? I know, I know. So that's the caveat. I said caveat one, caveat two. Feel free to do that because I'm the same way. When somebody ranks like a, an Alice in Chains list and they leave off like Junkhead, I'm just like, are you crazy? Do you realize what you've done? You've left off one of the best songs ever. I'm the same, I'm the same exact way. The only thing is, I always go at the writer with my own list. Like they give a damn. Here's the thing though. I actually do give a damn. So if you take the time to make your own top eight list and comment it to me or tweet it to me or whatever it is, I'm going to read it. I'm going to comment back. So do that. Do that for me. If you're going to come at me and say, hey, your list sucks, you might be right. But you have to be willing to put your list out there into the world too. That's the only way that I'm going to comment back or give you any kind of credence or whatever credibility or whatever the word is. I don't think credence is the right word. I think you know what I mean. All right, so back to the list. Number eight, I was calling this guy Bon Iver, and I was just, somebody just told me it's Bon Iver. Bon Iver? Bon Iver. I think I'm still saying it wrong, so could somebody phonetically spell that out? Anyway, Exile. Here's the thing. For me, that song is all about the vocal performance. It is friggin' amazing. It's amazing. Both. And I almost feel like it was such a great performance from both people. It was almost like they weren't trying to one-up each other. It just was that good where... Sometimes you do have to keep up. You know, they like you'll hear like um, a basketball team or a boxer when they they fight down in competition. Sometimes they don't have their best, but when they fight the best, that's when you see the best version of them. That's what I feel like happened here. Oh my gosh, both of them absolutely killed it. So Exiles number eight for me. Number seven, I put this number seven because I love a great story. I love songwriting. And for me, this was a story I followed along and really kind of got into it, even on that first listen, because I was watching myself. I could see myself kind of losing track the musical aspects of everything and just focusing on Taylor's voice in the story. And that's last the last great American dynasty. I just, for me, it's, it's a great story. Uh, and I, I love the way that she told it. Uh, number six, it's the obvious single. It's Cardigan. It's a great song. And actually, as I made this list, when I was just proofing it before I came on here to tell you guys about it, I was like, that feels a little low. But, you know, I was listening to these songs and I have to be truthful. I just, I have to keep it real. And for me, it's number six, but it's a great song. And here's the thing. Every time I'm done with a record, I will always say, I know what the best song is. I know what the most marketable song is. And I know what my favorite song is. It's like those three songs. I do it every single time. And as you, some of you know, I get to interview some great artists, rock and roll hall of famers, just, just some of the be best and biggest artists. I, I can't even imagine that I talk to. And they almost say that same thing to me all the time is that those three things. It's like there's the best song, there's the radio song or whatever it is, and then there's my favorite song. So for this, to me, Cardigan, absolutely, positively, it's the radio song of the whole collection to me. So there you go. Number five, number five. Number five is Epiphany. Here's the reason why I'm, I, I'm putting this number five and I'm putting it in my top eight. This is one, it's so ghostly. Uh, before, I don't know what video it was. Maybe it was on the folklore video. I don't know. I said the word ethereal. I was trying to figure out what that word was. And a bunch of you told me what that was. Cause I think I was saying ethereal. No, I was saying urethral or <laughs> saying something that was so wrong. Anyway, this has that ghostly otherworldly type feel to it. I was, I just actually had surgery. And as I was kind of recovering, I was laying in the bed and I was, uh, I was like that half awake thing. You know what I did? I grabbed my earbuds and I went to Amazon Music and I put on Epiphany and I put it on repeat. Boy, I went into this zone. I went into this. I almost felt like I left my my body. Like it was crazy. It was, but anyway, that was the song. So 
I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know that it was top eight until that happened last week on my recovery from that surgery was putting that on and it was just on repeat. So, you know, you can put that thing. It just goes, goes, goes. So I fell asleep with it, woke up, fell back asleep, woke up, that, that type of thing. And just hearing her voice and it was really comforting. I almost thought of putting up higher because now I feel like I got this like personal connection or emotional connection to it. Again, keeping it real. Number four. So, okay, this is me trying. I, I love her voice. I love the reverb vocal in this. It is the perfect amount of reverb because sometimes you can go a little crazy and it gets too much. Or sometimes you sit there and say, I wish it was a little bit more kind of, you know, angelic or whatever it is. This song has the perfect amount to me. It, it's perfect. I mean, it's the character of the song. But for me, it's the drum pattern. I love the drums in this song. I love the way they sound. I love the time signature. I love a little bit of a, a wacky time signature. So yes, I definitely, if I'm on a short period of time, I can only listen to so many songs. This is definitely one that I go to. I just love the way it sounds. And I love the way it sounds in the car. It just kind of has a this bump and groove to it. I love it so much. Number three, let's do number three. Originally, I thought this was going to be number one or two. If you remember the comments from my folklore, I'm not bitter. Uh, I mentioned this song a lot and people in the comments were saying, wow, it sounds like your favorite song or whatever. I thought it was too, but I'm going to get there. So number three for me is August. At one point, it was my favorite. I think it was. So I love the double tracked. I love the double tracked voice, the vocals on this. I think she just, she just she nails it on this whole record. I, gosh, you know, I'm, I'm going to give my thoughts on that in a second. But for me, there's this, uh, you know, changing for the better line. And it's the way she says it. And I, I said that actually in my original folklore uh, reaction video. As soon as she said it the first time, it strikes me. And every single time I listen to it, it struck me. And every single time I listen to it, it strikes me for the better. I can't do it. But the way she does it, there's just something about the way she says that. You know, that's actually one of the moments I wish I could have been in the studio to see how that came about. Did she just sing it like that? Was it organic? Was it a producer thing? I just like to see whose idea it was. Something small like that, but that's the things that just keep me coming back. So August, I almost sad to say it's number three because it's such a great song. You know, the weenie thing I talk about, you know, any song could be number one at any time. Truly, these three could interchange. They really can, but I was writing it on the feeling. Number two, number two, the main reason why Invisible String is number two is because I love the harmony vocal throughout the whole song. And there is that low, there's that high, and then sometimes there's like that mid, and you can hear that fifth in there, that fifth harmony, and it's gorgeous. It's it's the best vocal mix to me. It's the best vocal mix on the whole album. It I, I cannot get enough of that. So much so that I wish I could just find an acapella track of that song. Just that. I was telling you about, you know, kind of put on the earbuds and zoning out. That is something I would totally zone out to for hours and just listen to her vocal on it. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. It's my favorite vocal. And then, you know, the me's and the o's, and you know what I'm talking about. Because if you're watching this, you're a fan of the record. I, I cannot give it, get enough of that. Yeah, you know, I almost feel like now I'm saying this, that should be number one right now. I think you guys know it's number one. I've mentioned it so many times. Okay, I will admit to you right now, probably the first song I'm going to is, is Invisible String right now. So I guess that's not keeping it real. It keeps changing. Okay, right now, if I go to put on my earbuds and if I was going to, well, I can't go shoot hoops because I just had knee surgery. But if I could, I'd probably put that on first. But number one, consistently through this whole thing, as I've talked about Invisible, I've talked about, you know, August, it's Mirrorball. Mirrorball has been the one constant that no matter what, it doesn't get pushed out anywhere. And I had to keep it that way. Mirrorball is number one for me. It th there is, There is something so special about that song I've, th this shimmer, this 70s California vibe, you know, it's like, it's hard for me to really put my finger on it. I mean, I tried to write down my thoughts and, hey, what am I going to say about, about Mirabal? I can't say really nothing more than it's just, it's superb in every way. I love the songwriting. I love her vocal performance. I love the music because it's chill, but it's got so many things going on. I love the reverb. I love... Oh, I just love everything. I love the the compression in the voice. There there are so many things. You know, it actually pains me. I wish I could pull it up right now, play it, and talk about it. But I just don't want to run the risk of anything on folklore, man, because whatever. But I, I wish I could just pull it up. In fact, I'm going to leave you with that. I'm going to go turn on Mirrorball right now. I got my studio monitors on, so I'm, I'm going to crank this thing. I'm going to sit back. I'm going to close my eyes and just listen to it. 
Actually, I'm going to go through my whole list, but I'm going to start with Mirrorball. I'm going to start with number one. I'm going to start with number one. I'm going to leave you with that. Mirrorball, no, that's the right choice for me. Number one is Mirrorball. That's my favorite song off of Folklore. Job for you guys. I'd love to see your comments. I'd love to see your reactions to Favorite 8. I'd love to see that, but I really want to see yours too. I want to see what you have to say. You can tell me what you think of my list. I mean, that that's cool. That's fair game. But the thing is, I, I, I want to see your list too. I, I really do because so many of you had so many great things to say in the comments. I really enjoy reading them. I enjoyed reading them. I enjoyed commenting back. So this was my where the heck did my folklore video go? It's gone, but I'm going to be back with Lover because I'm not going to go anywhere else. Just so you know, I'm not going anywhere else. I mean, I'm going to do some live performance stuff because I almost can't wait to see some more live stuff, but I'm not going to another record. I'm not going to I guess with Hopscotch, I'm not going to go everywhere. Lover's the next record that we're going to do together. All right, I am gone. As always, if you want to find me on the social stuff and talk to me there, it is a great place to find me. T-O-M-M-Y-M-A-R-Z-B-A-N-D. Tommy Mars Band. That's where you can find me on Twitter or Instagram, whatever. All right, I am gone. I will see you next time. Mirrorball, baby.